So today I'm going to play with some solder paste and a solder paste mayor. This is the board I've got, rather nice. It's a little battery powered module and here's one I made up earlier with the case. If I put the solder paste on I do need to put these boards around it first. If I put the metal sheet over it directly it will bow and you end up with far too much solder paste under it and it just doesn't work. So boards of the same size help. Obviously glasses are a good idea. You've got to get the thing the right way up and I've got quite a few on this sheet because uh, PCB train do the same price for quite a large stencil so I generally make up quite a few. But find the right one the right way up and put it on your board. As you can see it's not too hard to line up, you've just got to find where it goes and it's really obvious when it lines up properly, look at that. All the pads line up really closely. Lovely. So now I need the solder paste, I've got a little pot of it here and I've got a plastic card so I just get some of the solder paste, I only need a tiny bit. Make sure it's all nicely lined up and then just put the paste on. It's, it's pretty much as simple as that. Uh, scrape it off level, there you go. And now very carefully remove the stencil. Clean the stencil straight away in this case because I don't want to dry solder paste stuck in the holes. It'll mess it up next time and uh, I can scrape the last bit of solder paste back in the pot and use it again later and you'll see you know it uses a tiny amount but the paste is really nicely on the board there and we now have board with the solder paste as you can see and um, there's sort of blobs of solder paste in large areas like that deliberately so that it isn't one big lump of solder paste but it's all nicely lined up on the little pads there so all I've got to do is put the components on now so it's not too hard um, fortunately I don't have to actually refer to instructions for most of these because I've done it so many times before the regulator let's do that first there's a big inductor here's the actual regulator chip itself um, here's a little 0.1 sorry, not 0.1 microfarad uh, boot capacitor. And so let's just plunk those on. Uh, obviously the chip has to be the right way up, which is a bit of a pain. And you have to look out for the markings to work out which is pin one and put it in the right place. So you have a nice little chip there. On the pads, nice and delicate, not too hard. Uh, this one goes next to it and of course I've knocked the chip out of the way so sometimes it's worth doing these in a different order even so solder paste is very um, flexible in terms of what you can get away with just have to be very delicate which I'm failing to be here Right, and a diode. You've obviously got to get the diode the right way round. And there's an input capacitor, an output capacitor. The output capacitor is 10 microfarads. Let's grab that. Input capacitor is a much smaller 2.2 microfarads. In this particular case, the pads allow for a bigger capacitor. The footprint I've done for the regulator here has um, been designed to allow me to adjust these components without having to mess about too much. Okay, so that's the regulator, 
Uh, now let's uh, look at uh, the USB chip. One moment. Actually, there's a diode that I've got in the same drawer, so I might as well take out and do the diode first. This particular diode is so that we can power it from USB. The idea is that the USB can power the DC, but the diode stops the DC feeding back into the USB and frying your computer, which is far too easily done. Right, we need an FT231, which is the USB chip. Uh, fortunately, I've put uh, a little uh, dot in the corner here just to make it really easy to work out which way around this goes and also to position the corners cleanly. Now, as I said, solder paste is very tolerant of um, uh, where you put things, so even slightly out it will snap into place later. I've also got a, a transistor pack I've got to put in. These are quite nice because they're um, five pin chips, so instead of the usual six, which means they're very easy to see which way round they are. Get it the way up, and um, most of the time we end up having to turn the board to drop it on the pads all the way around. There we go. That's a uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor to go on there. Now the USB needs uh, 5K1 resistors, it's part of the USB spec, if you don't put these in you won't get any power coming out of it. So let's put these on, just need two of them, there we go. <coughs> Oddly, <coughs> Oddly these resistors don't have any marking on them but I still try and put them the right way up on the board just to be neat. It's surprisingly difficult to turn these over with tweezers. Half the time they end up the same way that they started. So, as the 5K1 was just done, there's then uh, this little thing here's uh, a FET. It's uh, P channel and N channel FET, which allows uh, us to enable or disable a potential divide which is used for the ADC. Now, this is a little six pin chip, so you've got to get it the right way round. And it's uh, pin one marking is really obscure and tiny. There it is. So it goes that way around. Now, on this particular board, these pads are too big. They're an SO23, not an SO363. But fortunately, the chip will actually fit on these pads just. It's just a smaller chip, but it's close enough. Right, and an LED. Nice yellow LED. Obviously, things like diodes have to be the right way around. Um, you need to look at the data sheet for the marking. This one's easy, it's got a green line on one end. And of course, it's stuck to my tweezers. I must have got solder paste on the end of my tweezers here because what's happened is the LED stuck to them and wouldn't release when I opened the tweezers. There we go, perfect and a 680M resistor to go with that because it's a nice low current LED so this is a couple of milliamps and again get the resistor the right way up if you can again okay, sticking to my tweezers which meant it didn't come off and impossible to bloody turn over look at that how many times did I turn that over Right, one more try. Six ATMs. Perfect. Right, we now need the actual potential divide, which is a 1K and an 18K. So let's start with the 1K. Nice and simple. Given that this potential divide is actually turned off, um, it doesn't matter too much that these are fairly low. That's the 1K and the 18K. 
does help to have these all nicely organised in drawers, I tell you. I stuck the drawers to the uh, wall earlier today because I was a bit worried they were all going to fall down on me and drop all my resistors in a big pile. Thankfully, most resistors have a marking on so you can read them and they're fairly easy to decode with a meter. Capacitors, on the other hand, tend to be a little bit harder if you manage to drop them on the floor. So that's the 18k goes there. Now I've got a few 10Ks, there's about three of these. So that's, uh, there's two on the end of that tape and another tape. Right, three 10K resistors. So, there's one here. And, okay, attempting to turn these over is a nightmare. I think it'd be easy. Oh, for crying out loud. It's easy to just throw it down and rely on chance. So this is two resistors here. 10K. And Okay, so that's all the passives. There's only one more thing to go on, and that's the USB-C connector itself, on this side of the board anyway. And this fits in the holes, and there's two little lugs underneath to hold it in place. Right, double check everything looks like it's in place cleanly, which is good. Right, we're now ready to put that in the oven. So, very carefully, this is the bit where you do not want to drop it. In the oven, and that's going to take about 10 minutes, so back to that in a moment. And here we have it out of the oven. It's worth inspecting. There's uh, one component, a little bit of an angle there. What's happened is one side of that chip has not actually stuck so it just needs a tiny touch of solder on the side of it there otherwise it won't work okay uh, otherwise that is looking very clean not seeing any other chips with problems usb's on the little ftdi's on so yes, we had one chip not quite on the solder paste. So uh, at this point I plug it into the USB, well no, before I plug it into the USB, I make sure I solder the tabs on the USB to the board. There is solder paste under the USB, but it's nice to make sure it's physically secure because this is one thing you can pull off the board far too easily and you really don't want to do that. So solder the tabs so that you've got a nice, strong, physically secure USB connector there. Good. Now having done that, I will plug it into USB and we'll see if it talks to the computer at all. And the good news is, yes, that talks to the computer. That is working. I can talk to the FTDI and in fact I've programmed the FTDI to invert RTS and DTR so it'll work through the little transistor pack there. So, not quite finished. We have an ESP32 thread. So, one of those. It's obviously a slightly bigger component than the others we put on here, albeit uh, one of the cheapest. Now, um, the best way to solder this, obviously you could play with solder paste, but I'm not sure that's going to work as well. We're talking quite a lot of pads, quite a lot of area. So the trick here is simply to solder one of the pads first, and then you put this on there, and this, uh, this is where it gets a little bit uh, fun. You line it up carefully on all sides and melt the solder on that pad and check it's all still cleanly lined up and this isn't so I'm just going to move it slightly because you're only done one pad it's actually quite easy to realign it and move everything cleanly in place right everything's now in place now I can solder the other pads now all, most of these pads are really easy to solder
Now this is the boring bit, of course, of the video. Uh, slightly, oh no, this pad's, the ground pad's like this one on the corner, take a bit more heat. Um, of course, slightly um, interjected with a dinging phone, uh, just to remind you, if you're ever making a video, don't forget to put your phone on silent whilst making the video, otherwise you get noises off, which are a bit of a nuisance, and are getting even more of a nuisance. Okay, another ground pad here, very pain in the ass solder. Right, there's make sure all of those soldered. Right, there's soldered. And finally, we do this side. Ground pad here, so a bit more, and the rest go in really quick and easy. can actually get quite warm while you're doing this, so holding it with your finger can be a little bit uncomfortable. Right, so that's now in place. Uh, I've also got a six-way connector to go on it here, um, which makes it quite neat. The six-way connector, um, there's a whole load of pads around here, as you can see. These are there to allow um, pull-ups or links um, so, so four of these are links to 3.3 volts. Uh, it's useful because some devices, like the uh, DS18B20 thermometer, needs a, a pull-up resistor, for example. Uh, some things need power, so you just put a zero-ohm link in there even, as long as you don't program your GPIO to clash with it. This one pulls up to DC and has a series link, so you can just make this a DC input, which is quite useful, otherwise you've got these two pads here for DC. And there's a, there's a pad there to ground to allow you to do something to ground with that pad, like a capacitor or pull-down resistor or whatever you need. So it's very flexible. Um, having done that, we then plug it in and we see if we can talk to it. And yes, we're flashing it. This is good. Okay, well, flashing it does take a few seconds, which we've just skipped. But having flashed it, it will start running the code, which is about to start doing. And this code turns on the LED. And the first time it calibrates RF and connects to Wi-Fi and sets the clock, so it takes a moment. And now it's flashing. It can actually detect it's on USB, not battery, which means instead of just going to sleep, it flashes. If I connect it to a battery source instead, it will behave slightly different. So I've got one here. Well, I've got battery supply here, but this isn't going to work immediately because I'm actually powering it through these pads instead of through those. And this is where these pads come in. That one at the end there is ideal for using to just make a link to allow you to power it through that connector. So I just get myself a little zero ohm resistor. And here we go, one zero ohm resistor. And these pads are cunningly designed to allow me to use anything 1206, 805, or 603 components. So um, we just need to solder one side. Apply the zero ohm resistor. So the other side. Right, so that's a nice link. Now we can supply power. So if I turn it on, it comes on. And uh, the first time it comes on, it has to set its clock. So it does take a few seconds, but it's gone to sleep now. And my meter is reading zero. So we know this is using about 35 microamps now. So there you go. One battery based board. Solder paste, hand soldered, and uh, working as if by magic.